We will now discuss appendicitis. At the conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the appropriate care for a client diagnosed with appendicitis. Appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix. A common cause is obstruction of the lumen of the appendix by accumulated feces. It could also be obstruction from something like foreign body or tumor. Once the appendix becomes obstructed, you have distension and engorgement of the appendix with accumulation of mucus and bacteria, which can lead to gangrene and subsequent perforation. If the client experiences a perforation, they could suffer subsequent complications like peritonitis or abscess. Symptoms can vary and the diagnosis can be difficult. Patients experience periumbilical abdominal pain. This pain is persistent and continuous and eventually shifts to the right lower quadrant, localizing at McBurney's point. The client experiences anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. They have localized tenderness as well as rebound tenderness and muscle guarding. Coughing, sneezing, even taking a deep breath magnifies their abdominal pain. Low-grade fever may or may not be present. As far as laboratory tests, we do expect their white blood cell count to be mildly or moderately elevated. Our implementations for the client with appendicitis include no heating pads, enemas, or laxatives. The use of laxatives or enemas in a client with suspected appendicitis is dangerous because the resulting increase in their peristalsis could lead to a perforation. We don't want to apply heat to the abdomen as this could lead to rupture. It is important that we hold analgesics until the diagnosis of appendicitis is confirmed. If we give the client pain medications, this could mask or cover symptoms of rupture. We need to keep the client NPO as we anticipate surgery as definitive treatment. We could apply ice to the abdomen, which would decrease inflammation and help alleviate their discomfort. It is important that we continue to monitor the client's pain. If the client experiences a sudden cessation of their pain, this is worrisome for rupture. And if your client experiences a rupture, we must then be on guard for and watch for signs and symptoms of peritonitis. Surgical removal of the appendix is the definitive treatment for appendicitis. This can usually be achieved laparoscopically. Pre and post-op, we also treat our patients with IV hydration or IV fluids to prevent dehydration and we are treating them with antibiotic therapy as well. Post-operatively, we place the client in a Fowler's position. This helps relieve their abdominal discomfort and pain. It also helps to ease their work of breathing. It's time for a practice question. The nurse auscultates the abdomen of a client suspected of having appendicitis. Which finding by the nurse supports the diagnosis of appendicitis? Number one, diminished bowel sounds. Number two, normal bowel sounds. Three, hyperactive bowel sounds. Four, absent bowel sounds. Number one is correct. The bowel sounds on auscultation are diminished in the client with acute appendicitis. Appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix due to infection or obstruction. Indications include abdominal pain in the right lower quadrant at McBurney's point, anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation, rigid abdomen, increased temperature, and leukocytosis. Nursing interventions include no application of heating pads, no enemas, or laxatives. Preoperatively, we maintain an NPO status until blood laboratory reports are received. No analgesics until the cause of pain is determined we can apply an ice bag to the abdomen to alleviate pain. We observe for signs and symptoms of peritonitis and recognize that sudden loss of pain indicates perforation and is an emergency. After appendectomy, give normal post-op care. Place the client in a Fowler's position to relieve pain and ease breathing. Two is incorrect. The nurse would expect to find diminished bowel sounds. Three is incorrect. 
the nurse would expect to find diminished bowel sounds. Number four is incorrect. The bowel sounds and acute appendicitis would be diminished, not absent.